Welcome. This video is going to take a look at an instrument called a calorimeter. A calorimeter is an insulated device used to measure the amount of heat absorbed or released during a chemical reaction or a physical process. So a calorimeter can be used to determine the specific heat, especially for metals that's often used, but it can also be used to determine the calories in food or the energy in fuels, and that's usually expressed as uh, kilojoules per gram or calories per gram. So the object being measured is surrounded by water, which is going to absorb all the heat being released by the object that you're interested in. So the big assumption here is that all the energy released by your object is going to be absorbed by the water. So we're going to assume the change in heat for the object is equal to the change in heat for water. And that's what all calorimeter assumptions are made on. And there's actually a way to calibrate a calorimeter and account for the fact that there's going to be some heat loss but good calorimeters have very little heat loss and they're able to account for that, as I said. So here's what one calorimeter looks like. This one involves food being burnt. So the food is in a separate chamber from the water. There's also, you see these, it looks like little smokestacks here. That's to allow oxygen to come in and CO2 and other gases to escape. And then it's surrounded by water. And again, the assumption is that all the heat that gets released by that piece of burning food is going to get transferred to the water. And you can see that there's a thermometer, there, thermometer to uh, record the change in temperature of the water. And you'd also have to know the mass of your water then to do your calculations. This calorimeter looks a little different. In this case, the sample is going to be placed right into the water. So this is done with things that obviously don't dissolve in water. And also it's preferable if they don't float so that they completely submerge. But um, So in this case, let's think of this as a chunk of metal. And you heat the metal up. And measuring the temperature of metal is a little bit tricky. So oftentimes you heat it up in boiling water and leave it long enough to assume that the metal has also reached 100 degrees or the boiling point of water. And then you go ahead and drop it in the water here. And then the stirring stick just helps speed up the process of heat transfer. And eventually the temperature will stabilize and we can assume the temperature of the water and the temperature of the metal are the same and make our calculations from there. So I'm going to work a couple examples of calculations, one for a food sample and one for a metal. So a couple things about how these calculations are done. Again, the big assumption is that all the energy released by the object will be absorbed by the water. So we can assume delta H of the object is equal to delta H of the water. Now, technically, we should think of delta H of the water as a positive value because it's absorbing or gaining the energy whereas delta H for the object should be a negative value. That also means that the change in temperature for water is going to be a gain or a positive value, whereas delta T for the object is going to be negative because it's going to be a loss. So, you know, negative and negative, it's going to cancel out and give you a positive value when you get done, whether you're calculating specific heat or if you're calculating the energy release per gram. So you can measure and use the change in temperature of the water plus the mass and specific heat of water to calculate the heat released, usually released by your object. It's possible that it may be absorbed in a calorimeter. And then you can also use the change in heat to find the specific heat of your object or to calculate the heat per gram that it contains because we're going to assume those two values are equal to each other. So let's look at an example of a metal. A 75 gram sample of a metal is heated until its temperature is 100 degrees and then is placed in a 100 gram sample of water to cool down. The water is 24.4 degrees initially. After the metal is cooled, both the metal and water reach a final temperature of 34.9 degrees Celsius. What is the specific heat of this metal? So that's a lot of information to keep track of. So what I'm going to do and what I'd suggest you do when you're working these problems is I'm going to write down all my numbers and label them. So I've got the mass of my metal is 75 grams. It's heated until its temperature is 100 degrees, so that's what we call the initial temperature, or beginning temperature, Ti. It's placed into a 100 gram sample of water the mass of my H2O is 100 grams. 
the water is 24.4 degrees initially. And then after the metal is cooled down, they both reach a final temperature of 34.9 degrees. Now, I'm being asked to find C for my metal, but I don't know delta H. Remember, our basic equation for heat change is delta H equals M times C times delta T. So I need delta H before I can calculate a C value for this metal. But over here, I do know C for water. It's 4.184 joules per gram per Celsius degree. And since delta H for the water and the metal are going to be the same, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my water values here. 100 grams of water, specific heat of 4.184, Temperature change, that looks like 10.5. So now if I go ahead and calculate this, I have 100 grams times 4.184 times 10.5, which is a change in heat of 4,393.2 joules. And so this not only is my delta H for my water, but this should also be delta H for my metal. So now I can take it and set up a second equation. Again, delta H equals MCAT. And this time I know delta H is 4393.2. And now I plug in my values for my metal. 75 gram sample of metal. C is what I want to find. And my temperature change here, if I take 34.9 minus 100 is 65.1. Now it's up to you. If you consider this heat change to be a negative, then you should consider your temperature change to be a negative. And the negatives are going to cancel out when you do your math. If you put them both in as positive, that's fine as well. Just don't end up with a negative C value. So I divide both sides by the 75 and the 65.1 and I come up with a heat value, a specific heat value of 4393.2 divided by 75 times 65.1 in parentheses. I'm coming up with a heat value of 0.8997 or 0 0.90 and that's joules per gram per Celsius degree. And that's one use of a calorimeter. Second common use of a calorimeter is to look at the energy contained within a food source or a fuel source. And to do that, I don't need quite as much information. I have an almond with a mass of 1.18 grams. It's completely combusted in a calorimeter. The calorimeter contains 100 grams of water, which starts at 26.5 degrees and reaches a maximum temperature of 87.2. How many calories per gram are contained in an almond? And I'm given the specific heat of water in calories because I'm being asked to calculate the kilocalories per gram. So again, I'm going to use the same basic idea that delta H is going to be equal for both the water and the almond. So I'm going to have enough information to calculate delta H for my water. And if I look, I have 100 grams of water. I was given a C value of 1.00 calories oops, per gram Celsius degree. And I have a change in heat of 87.2 minus the 26.5, which is a change of 60.7 degrees, which is a pretty big swing there. And if I go ahead and calculate this, 100 times 1 times 60.7 is going to give me 6,070. Delta H for my water is 6,070 calories. That also should be delta H for my almond. And now finding calories per gram is actually, um, I think, simpler than finding the specific heat of our metal in the previous problem. Because now I could take 60,070 calories 
and change it to kilocalories because I know one kilocalorie is a thousand small calories. So this is really 6.070 kilocalories. And I simply divide by the mass of my sample, 1.18 grams. And when I do that, I come up with 5.14 calories per gram in an almond. And that's what the uh, information on the nutrition label on packages is telling you. Someone has actually put that food in a calorimeter and come up with this value.